The team behind the Divided Empire mod recently released this impressive new campaign, the Mithridatic Wars. So of course you are about to see me attempt to accomplish the task Mithridates couldn't. Kick Rome out of Anatolia and liberate Greece. As our empire was a sandbox of untouched potential, I took my time slowly building it up one province at a time. Until about turn 1 into the campaign, where the first Solani client state, Bithynia, declared war on us. God damn it! Oh well, as you can see I just diverted my treasury into an army and then marched out to solve this conflict. With that done, let's build tall for once. Oh come on! At this point in time, I let Armenia deal with their wars on their own, as their odds against their enemies were much better than for the Cilicians. Once again, Mithridates squashed their town, but this time had to leave a small garrison behind while he dealt with an entire army of hostiles roaming massacre. Sadly, it wasn't large enough as the third Sulani client state just liberated the town without any issue. This was just more annoying than anything else as Mithridates marched his army back to defeat all the hostiles in one single battle. The biggest downside to this was our army suffered heavy casualties. This was also combined with additional kingdoms declaring war on us. Having so many war fronts might seem bad and all, but I promise you, it wasn't as bad as the Bactrian campaign. Nevertheless, our little bullying of the client states caused the big daddy himself to wake up. Now this war... This is why we are here. Being at war on multiple fronts requires a plan. So as you and I both know the Sulani are also at war on multiple fronts and thus probably still not ready to strike, I plan to kick them out of Anatolia. That would give us a great barrier in form of a sea, perhaps patrolled by a fleet or something. Screen our kingdom while we then march back east and assist Armenia in their many wars. Sounds good? Great. I immediately built up a second army at Nicomedia while we finished off the last Roman client states in Anatolia. This new army wasn't actually fully formed before it saw action. We had to be swift dealing with the Sulani so their foothold didn't grow roots. However, their attention was needed elsewhere. Apparently, Armenia was losing decisively. So much in fact our own ports were being targeted. The Armenians even switched sides, so screw them. I didn't really need that army anyway. It only caused us a bit more trouble with the Fessos than I originally intended. But it was resolved by making the port semi-independent from our rule. We can't get a fleet up and running because of this, but I feel like this front is stable enough. Thus, we three deters march towards the east as well. The second army which had grown in size since its departure was ready to face the hostiles occupying our lands. As the enemies didn't garrison the town with their army, it was possible for us to swoop in, fortify it for our own, and use the tight streets to finish off their forces. But there was no time to celebrate, as we almost instantly had to defend the port a second time. Both of these heroic victories turned out to solve our issues. We could now march in and subjugate Sofen, our enemy, and at the same time bring Armenia back to our side. Bloody hell, they switched sides more than… well, you, you know what? Never mind. Now all we had to deal with was Samosata, which served its allegiance to the Seleucids, who also had war with us, by the way. We easily rushed their position along with the Seleucids, meaning we had pacified the eastern frontier, or at least created a wall of client states. As you can see, this decision granted us time to take a deep breath. And you know what? Let me quickly explain our infrastructure a bit. Basically, we were funding all our armies and this reasonable surplus by exporting all the food we produced from our core province alone. Okay, this might be the data from the end of the campaign, where most of the buildings were finished, but you can easily see how strong this export edict was, or at least turned out to be. The reason this was so powerful was due to the fishing ports and more importantly the slaughterhouses. Livestock is so OP in the early game. It doesn't even take that long to research compared to the commerce based income from the economy guide. Well this is more of an early game income source of course. Anyway, let's get back to the story. 
This surplus of gold allowed us to field two high quality armies that we immediately sent into Thrace. The natives put up a tough fight, but our pikes and experienced archers made quick work of their deorganized armies. However, if we are to use Thrace as a springboard to attack the Solani Romans, we need a fortress, a place to fall back to in the odd chance of failure. That place would be Pulpediva, as Pella itself, as you can see, held a massive host of Roman legionnaires. And failure we felt, not militarily, but politically. A political party started a secession in Pharsis. They didn't take over any crucial armies or anything, but they were mostly our governors, meaning our economy took a massive dip. Besides, our client state barrier had begun to show its flaws. The Eastern Front must be dealt with again. I left one army at Popediva while Mithridates and another army which is being mustered at Ankara were on their way. This time, luckily, we reached the frontier in time, before the hostiles could attack, but the entire province of Armenia had already succumbed to Atropat Khan influence. You have probably screamed this at me during the last conflict in this area and in all my other videos as well. But now I listened. We couldn't leave Armenia in the hands of foreigners. We waited for Mithridates to arrive so we could conquer Armenia for ourselves. However, Atropat Khan didn't wait for us to be ready for a fight. A massive mistake from their side as our men easily disposed of their silly attempt. We immediately used this victory to counterattack. And as Mithridates arrived, two more towns fell to our might. But with my focus fixated on Atropat Khan, mostly due to me knowing how annoying they can be from my backturn campaign, it allowed the secessionists to sneak up on me. They even made it to Koran. It was quite annoying actually, especially as Mithridates' army had suffered many casualties from a recent Atropat Khan offensive. We eventually resolved the issue by us slaying the last bit of resistance in the province. I'm gonna make the rest of this war in the east quick. We punished the secessionists and made peace with Atropat Khan after having conquered Armenia. They did try to stir up more trouble later on, but we dealt with that thanks to the help of our allies. And why aren't we going into more details than this, you might ask? Well, I'll show you. During our little conflict against Atropat Khan, the single army we left in Thrace had to fend off countless Roman invasion attempts. First we had to deal with Lucius Licinius Locollus, who I started fanboying about actually throughout this entire fight. If you don't understand why, you clearly haven't played Expeditions Rome, which I have actually made one video on previously. Nevertheless, it was a close victory and also resulted in us killing Locollus. Never meet your heroes, I guess. After that, I plan to take on Pella itself. Despite us actually defeating an attempted counterattack from the Solani, we had to fall back. Sola himself showed up at the front lines. He must already have taken over Italy, I guess. This left our army in the middle of nowhere, granting the annoying Roman fleet access to Anthea. So we of course had to deal with this. However, after spending most of our energy dealing with that, Sola arrived. By this point I was mentally drained, so as I saw the auto assault button gave us a victory, I took it. It was the easy way out, but so be it. Don't you worry, we still have plenty of battles to come. Among them I have this one here, which really pressured our tactical ability. However, as we were a pike faction, winning battles shouldn't be too difficult against an empire only familiar with swords and shields. This was all a diversion as the real attack came in the form of an invasion of Ephesus. With even more men to come. This is what happens when you don't follow through with your own plans and don't build a fleet. Luckily for us, it was at this time Mithridates returned from his campaign in the east. The next move was actually up in Thrace. We captured Nysus and quickly marched on towards Pella. It was hours within a month. This was then followed by our two experienced armies from the east striking at Ephesus. This was a major battle with incredible numbers of troops. Too bad my potato of a PC can't handle it. So no cinematic battle here, sorry. Instead you can get this cool tactical view. After this victory we struggled to deal with the island of Rhodes, mostly due to the Roman fleet being a nuisance. So we started building up our own. 
which eventually crushed the Sulani marines. Guess they haven't learned a thing since their conflict with Carthage. However, they are way more powerful on land. Our swordsmen didn't stand a chance trying to hold the walls. But what they haven't realized is how powerful pikemen are at defending fortifications such as Pella like we are in here. It is almost as if the city was made by someone familiar with pike formations. This meant we had a clear way into Greece proper. As Mithridates joined the invasion force, we placed our claim on Larissa. Lepidus tried to stop us, but just like Octavian and Antony did with his future son, we swatted him to the side. After that, carving up the rest of Greece was easy. The peninsula was once again dominated by Hellenism 